I know, I know. Like, as soon as this topic came up on stage, I'm sure I got a couple of groans from the audience here. <laughs> Some of you are like, here we go with the whole crypto thing. All right. Now, I know cryptocurrency hype and NFTs are what are making your news feeds today. There's actually technology underlying this that's worth paying attention to. You will be using blockchain technology someday, even if it seems like a toy to you right now. If you remember, the internet seemed like a toy at first, too. The, there was a time in my life when it was rare to find the internet in people's homes, even though PCs were very popular. I think for most of America, the internet was a means to get to this new thing called electronic mail that they had heard about, sweeping the nation. Um, I remember sometime in the early 90s, there was a talk show, and the hosts were laughing about the internet, saying how one of their friends keeps getting him to sign up for the internet because he wanted someone to email. And his response was, I have a fax machine at home. If you want to message me so bad, just send me a fax. <laughs> and it's funny, because at the time, that host was actually right. Like, fax machines could send documents that looked better, faster, to more homes, because more people had fax machines. But it's funny to watch back those clips now, because you can see how little imagination we all had for the technology that was coming for us. You couldn't have imagined in 1994 that someday the internet would summon a stranger to drive you to the airport, <laughs> or that it would replace both your grocery store and your movie theater somehow. Um, but what we did know, even back in 1994, was what the internet promised to bring. The internet promised us digital connectedness. And that's what it did. It fulfilled that promise. So where the internet promised digital connectedness, I'm telling you, blockchain promises digital ownership. And much like it's really hard to predict Uber in 1994, it's very difficult for me to say exactly how blockchain technology will enter your lives. Sure, you might be using a digital currency someday. Or Perhaps uh, the gamers out there in the audience, maybe your next game will have in-game items that you not only will buy, but then can later sell or give to a friend. Uh, for those of you in the audience who bought your tickets secondhand, maybe the next event you attend, the tickets will be bought in a way that doesn't leave you wondering while you're driving here whether that PDF you printed will actually get you in the door or not. <laughs> uh, for everybody here, maybe your next driver's license will be a digital one. You could go buy a beer at a 7-Eleven and not show the clerk your full name and home address. So while I can't exactly predict how this technology will enter your life, I am here to make sure that when it does, you know how to stay safe. This is a world where scamming is rampant and scams are costly. But lucky for everybody here, the rules for staying safe are actually very simple to write down. There are only two rules to know. Rule one protect your seed phrase. Rule two, understand what you sign. There you go. <laughs> okay, I know both of these things are very foreign sounding to most of you here, so let's dive in. Uh, first, to understand this, it helps to understand what is a blockchain. In essence, a blockchain is just a giant database that lives on the internet that anyone in the world can add data to, anyone in the world can read data that's in it. The key difference between a blockchain and other databases that came before it is that it's decentralized, it's not hosted anywhere, there's no owner, there's no singular authority that can change the contents of that database. The second thing is that there are rules in place enforced by the blockchain to make sure that nobody can touch data that's not theirs. There are rules to make sure that you can't cheat. So let's go back to the two rules. Actually, if it helps to think of an analogy, you can think of a blockchain sort of like a giant digital locker room where anyone can come and go, anyone can see what's in other people's lockers, anyone can have a locker of their own, but only you know the combination to your own locker. So if you think back to the two rules, rule one, protect your seed phrase. Well, what is a seed phrase? To illustrate, here's my seed phrase. It's a list of 24 English words, seems very simple, that is the key to the entirety of your security on the blockchain. If the blockchain is a digital locker room, this is your locker combination. Anyone who has it can open that locker just as well as you can. So obviously, I just made a huge mistake in front of you all here. I am showing you my seed phrase. That's really bad. Um, 
anybody who now has this has the full permission to take any assets owned by this and drain it from my account. No, you're welcome. <laughs> Now, full disclosure, this is not my real seed phrase. This is a seed phrase I made specifically for this talk. And actually, as an Easter egg, there might be something in there if anybody finds the uh, locker combination out there. Um, okay, I'm going to show you the most popular scam on the blockchain today. This is the blockchain that I, I'm sorry, this is the scam that I encounter in my day to day life. Every day, people get fall for this. This is where 99.5% of people's cryptocurrencies get lost. Are you ready to see the most state-of-the-art scam in the blockchain? It's literally a website that has 24 blanks and a send button at the bottom. And day after day, people get tricked into filling out this form and clicking send for whatever reason. And what you're doing is you're typing in your seed phrase and sending it straight to a scammer. And as soon as you click that send button, everything you own is gone. It's really sad to see that. But the fact that this works at all is evidence that many people out there did not get rule one. <laughs> rule one, protect your seed phrase. If anybody's asking for your seed phrase, they are for sure trying to steal from you. There's no legitimate reason to ever give your seed phrase and no legitimate reason to ever ask someone for theirs. A slightly more nuanced thing, though, is also to be careful where you store these 24 words. Like, obviously, in a keynote slide that I presented to TEDx Portland is not a good place to store a seed phrase. Uh, neither is a JPEG file on your hard drive, like it's showing here. Your computer may not be as safe as you think. It's running 100 applications. It's connected to the internet. If an attacker were to able, to able to get that JPEG off your desktop, it's as good as you sending it straight to them. You'll wake up one day, everything you own will be gone, and you won't know how. It sounds weird, but the state of the art right now for this is to store these 24 words, this digital secret, in the physical world, written down on paper, or heck, punched into steel is actually a thing that many people do, and hide it somewhere safe. It's weird, it's like a combination of new tech and hiding things under your mattress. <laughs> so that's rule one, protect your seed phrase. Let's move on to rule two. Understand what you sign. In the world of blockchain, any time you need to prove ownership of something, you do that by creating a digital signature. So why might you need to prove you own something? Well, in the world of cryptocurrencies, the person sending a cryptocurrency needs to prove first that they own it before they can send it. There are a million things you might need to prove ownership for. Let me show you what it looks like today to sign something digitally. You'll be browsing the web. You'll encounter a website that wants to talk to a blockchain. There'll usually be a button you click. And when you click that button, a pop-up will show up, and it'll have something that's going on and a big approve or deny button at the bottom. And for better or worse, this is using a design pattern that many of you in the audience here have gotten really good at ignoring. Mac OS wants to update tonight. You're like, deny, I'm, I'm busy, I can't do that. And, um, this website has cookies. Please accept them to get this big thing to go away. You're like, yes, accept, accept. Um, in the world of cryptocurrencies, you can lose a million dollars with a single approve button click, and you'll never get it back. So if that's a habit you've grown to have in your life to blindly click approve deny, once you're in this world, pay attention to what it says. In this, this is an example of another common scam. Not nearly as common as the first, but it's still pretty common. You'll have something where somebody thinks they're doing something. I'm, I'm claiming some digital art. And when you click the button, if you look closely and squint, it's asking you for your full US dollar balance. Now, rule two, understand what you sign. Anytime you're being asked to create a digital signature, if you can't understand what you're being asked or you don't agree with what's being asked, don't sign it. Click deny or close that window, move on with your life, nothing bad will happen. It's clicking approve and creating that signature when bad things can happen. That's it, those are the two rules. Protect your seed phrase, understand what you sign. Now, I know many of you in the audience here are not into this technology now, but it is coming for you. The, the promise of digital ownership is as powerful as the promise of digital connectedness that the internet brought. However this technology comes to you someday, I hope you remember my two rules and stay safe on the blockchain. Thank you.